Thank you for joining us for our Monday Thursday service here at First Lutheran Church, Lesur, Minnesota. I am Pastor Carl Breeler. I am thankful that you have joined us for this special worship service. Monday Thursday is for me, I believe, one of the most touching services of the whole year. It's the, me, the, the service in which we, rem we remember Jesus breaking bread with his disciples. I'll say more about that in just a minute. I do want to let you know that tomorrow, Good Friday, April 2nd, there will be an online devotion posted by 2 o'clock in the afternoon on our website. My colleague in ministry, Pastor Terry Horn from the United Methodist Church and I, will be partnering with me in doing that service. I also want to let you know that on Easter Sunday, April 4th, we will be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in an online worship that will be posted by 7 o'clock in the morning. And also, there will be an opportunity for in-person worship, weather permitting, in our church parking lot, 9 o'clock in the morning, Sunday, April 4th. We will have an outdoor PA system. You can either stay in your car, or if you prefer and the weather is nice, you can get outside, bring your own lawn chair. We will have Holy Communion, and we will celebrate the sacrament in that meal. The Holy Communion set up for... That service um, will be provided at the service. If you are watching that service online, Holy Communion will be in the Holy Week in a bag that you picked up earlier, or you could prepare your own. We will have Holy Communion as a part of our service tonight, and that setup was in the bag that you picked up earlier in the week. I also want to let you know that we will be having a special congregational meeting for those who are members of the congregation on Sunday, September 11th. There will be online worship this, that morning, and then at 9.30 there will be a Zoom special congregational meeting for the sole purpose of making a decision about the parking lot driveway project. And you should have by now received a letter if you're a member of the congregation informing you of that meeting and providing some background information about that. Good news, we will open for in-person worship here in the sanctuary Sunday, April 18th. We are going to request that you make a reservation to come and be in the presence of, uh, of the sanctuary with one another, wearing masks and following our preparedness plan. There will be an online reservation system through our Sign of Genius, or you can call the church office. And that will open uh, beginning on Monday, April 12th. And so we look forward to that time of in-person worship on Sunday, April 18th. I do want to let you know we have new copies of the Christ in Our Home devotional booklet, large print and pocket edition for the months of April, May, and June. They are available in the church office. Contact Stacy, and she would be glad to send one of those to you. Now I want to share a little bit about Monday, Thursday, the service that we are about to begin in just a minute. This evening marks a very special observance in our Lenten journey. As we gather with Christians from around the world, and we do that by Zoom, and we do it in spirit, to begin the celebration of what's called the three days, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, which leads to the resurrection, Jesus Christ rising from the dead. Tonight we remember the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples. But the central focus is on his commandment, his new commandment, that we live out the promise embodied in the meal. As Jesus washed his disciples' feet, so we are called to give and to receive love in humble service to one another. Formed into a new body in Christ, through that holy meal, holy communion, we are transformed by the mercy that we have received, and we carry that out into the world as we live out our lives. Departing worship tonight, 
we will end our service by stripping the altar, by removing all signs of life and color and light. Our service will end in darkness with a reading from Psalm 116. We will be reminded of the emptiness in the world when Christ died. But I remind you that we are Easter people, and we know that he rose again on the third day. Let us now begin worship. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil. All that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Let us now take a moment of silent reflection and confession. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we are, are captive, captive to sin and cannot, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have not loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Claire Hudson has a message just for our little members, our boys and girls. Invite them up to the screen, whether you have kids of your own or grandchildren in the home, and maybe there's something in this for you also. Everyone. 
Welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Do you know what Monday Thursday is or what happens on this day? Well, one thing that I always remember about this day is that Jesus reminded us to be kind people and to always love one another. One way in which he did this on that very day was by washing the feet of his people. Why do you think he washed the feet of his people? Well, if you said something along the lines of him caring for them, making them feel loved, or about him going out of his way to do a good deed for another, you're right. Jesus cared about each and every one of them, and he wanted to remind them of that before he left them. Today, we reflect on many things, but something that I'd like you all to reflect on is how you loved others today and how you loved yourself. Today, you used your feet to travel all over, whether that was playing at home, going to school, or even at daycare. Your parents and maybe siblings also traveled on their feet all day. And you know what else you used today? Your hands. Each task you completed, I'm sure, was with the help of your hands and fingers. So one way that you can be like Jesus was on this day would be to tell your family that you would like to wash their hands or their feet today. Then hopefully they'll wash yours too. And to carry on our good stewardship like Jesus would want us to, we should all think of ways maybe five ways that we can always be kind, but especially this week. Try to come up with those five ways that you can be kind to others today, tomorrow, and the rest of this week. And if that means you need to write them down or color a picture about what those are gonna be, you go ahead and you do that. Whatever you choose to do, remember, Jesus is with you. Thank you, Claire, for that Monday, Thursday children's message that touches all of us. In our readings for this evening, they really take us back to, uh, to our, our history. First, we will hear Dave Nelson read the account from the book of Exodus on how to prepare the meal of Passover, how to prepare the lamb, how to consume it, all those practices that are tied up in Passover, celebrating and remembering God's faithfulness. So here now the reading from Exodus from Dave. Our first reading, Exodus 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep, or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night. I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dave, for sharing that, uh, that piece of our history as God's people. And now Kylie Dunning will be joining us from Decorah, Iowa. She will be sharing for us how Jesus, in coming to celebrate Passover, prepared and served a meal to his disciples, a meal that changed the world forever, a meal in which he gave himself for his disciples, for you and for me. Hear now these words from Kylie. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this Monday, Thursday comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, the 13th chapter. And before I read this, I just will give you a short little introduction. Jesus, of course, is coming to the end of his earthly life. In our text for tonight, we hear the story of his washing of the disciples' feet and his giving of the new commandment that his disciples, his followers, that you and I, love one another. And then in the final section, Jesus announces his impending departure. The lesson begins at verse 1 of chapter 13. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He said to Simon Peter, who said to him, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am going to do, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. 
Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Then Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, the one who broke bread and poured wine, washed his disciples' feet, and went to the cross for you and for me. Amen. Maundy Thursday is kind of a strange name when you stop and think about it. It's a special day on our church's liturgical calendar. The name Maundy comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means mandatory. You are to love one another just as I have loved you. If you do this, you are truly my disciples. My friends in Christ, we are in the midst of Holy Week 2021. A year ago now, we were living under the stay-at-home order that our Governor Walz here in Minnesota had issued. He had done that in an attempt to flatten the curve, and I think we've all seen that chart that spiked last November. It's come down now. Fast forward one year, many of us have vaccine in our arms. Businesses are starting to open. Students are back in school. We have a plan to be back in worship here on Sunday, April 18th. Spring is on its way. New life is coming. But we are still in the midst of Holy Week. Tonight, Monday, Thursday, it's a time for us to remember. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was about to go to the cross where he would give up his life for you, for me, for the whole world. In the reading from the Gospel of St. John that I shared with you just a moment ago, we hear that Jesus has knelt at the feet of his disciples like a servant. He has washed their feet and he has given them a new commandment they are, that they are to love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. Just as I have loved you. This is a new commandment that gives today its day, its name, Maundy Thursday. The Latin phrase for the new commandment, mandatum novum, shapes our whole liturgy, liturgy this evening. On Monday, Thursday, Jesus gives us a new commandment to love one another just as he has first loved us. What a powerful commandment that is and how different the world would be if we truly followed that. Our world has suffered some tremendous tragedies in recent days, from the lives of the Asian Americans that were lost in Atlanta, to the random people that lost their lives inside and outside the King Supers market in Boulder, Colorado. How we need this commandment that we would love one another. Let's think for a moment about this commandment that Jesus is giving. This is the one who, through, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. 
but rather Christ emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being born in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient, even to the point of death, death on a cross. The love of Jesus is a self-emptying love. His love is a servant-minded love where his concern is not for himself, but for others, for the sake of the whole world. His love is a love that when there is absolutely nothing to gain from loving, no payback, he still loves. And this is the love that Jesus models for us. And he commands that we demonstrate for one another. This godlike love is more really than any of us could muster on our own. It's impossible for us to do it on our own. It is the likes of which we have seen over the course of the last year as health healthcare workers have put their lives on the line as law enforcement people and first responders have put themselves at great harm and at great risk, seeking to help those who are suffering and dying from the coronavirus and from all of the tragedy and conflicts that have erupted over the course of the last 12 months. And it's a love that's not easy. It is a love which we would not freely choose there are times when I walk away from the text, this very text that we hear on this Monday, Thursday, and I think to myself, I just can't do it. I cannot love the way Jesus loved. There is no way that I can love others in the same manner that my Lord Jesus has loved me. But you know, perhaps Jesus doesn't expect me to. Maybe he doesn't expect us to. Perhaps this evening and this new commandment doesn't bear to us the call of Jesus to live up to his model as a people of sacred love. I wonder sometimes if we have misinterpreted this little phrase, just as. Oftentimes we think of it as meaning in the same manner as. In other words, we hear Jesus saying to us, I have shown you what this kind of love looks like, so go do it on your own. But what if that isn't exactly what he means? What if Jesus isn't demanding that we be just as loving and just as godlike and just as humble and just as obedient and just as selfless as he is? What if just as means now that I have. What if just as means in as much as I have? Or what if just as means since I now have? You see, Monday Thursday is not the day when a newer, higher command to love is given to us. It is not the day when we humans who were entirely incapable of faithful love before we knew Christ are told that somehow now we live, we need to love at an even higher level. No, my friends in Christ, Monday, Thursday is the day when Jesus demonstrates his love for us, for you and for me. His, his self-emptying love his self, his servant-minded love, his humble and obedient love, his loves with, that loves when there is nothing to be gained from that love. And as he loves us with that love, we are changed. We are changed. And as much as his love is given to us and to, it takes hold of our hearts, his godlike love begins to shape our very lives and begins to shape our living. It alleviates, takes away our fear, and it gives us confidence that God is with us no matter what the future holds. 
and we still don't know what the future holds. We hear about these variant versions of this virus. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. We know who holds us. The love that you and I share becomes a sign of the change that has taken place within us, a glimpse of the difference that Christ makes for you and for me. And to the degree that his love takes hold of our hearts and redirects our living and our loving, Jesus says to us, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples. And so Jesus is saying to us today, you are the ones that I have loved. You are the ones whose lives are shaped by my love. You are the ones whose living is altered, is transformed and changed forever by my love. That is what it means to believe that our loving will help others to see that we are Christ's disciples. And so this evening is a hopeful evening. Hopeful even though it ends in darkness. It's hopeful because it is a chance for us to experience again the depth of Christ's love for us. Tonight we experience the self-serving, servant-minded, humble, obedient love of Jesus. That love, the love that loves us even when there is nothing to be gained from that loving. In this Lenten season, we have journeyed with Jesus. We have heard his call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, everything that keeps us from loving God and each other. The stakes are high. It is not an easy task, this struggle to which we are committed in our baptism and in our daily living. God's forgiveness and the power of the Spirit to amend our lives continue with us because of God's love for us in Christ Jesus, who laid down his life for us, that we might live even in the face of death. To that, let us all say, thanks be to God. Amen.
of me above all. We join now together in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United by the servant love of God and Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the broken and hurting world in which we live. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith from one generation to the next. Give your church hunger for your promises in the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for washing and drinking. Water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You redeemed your people from slavery, preserved people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression, especially children arriving daily at our southern border. Establish just leadership in place of tyranny and peace in place of war. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it, those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked, heal the sick and embrace the dying. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the lives and ministry of all throughout your church. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your glory shown in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for the generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hear these in all our prayers, O God. In the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. On this Monday, Thursday, we remember that Jesus gave up his life for us. First, he shared bread and wine with his disciples, but then he went to the cross. In our offering, we offer some of what God has blessed us with to support the work of the church, to support the ministry of this congregation, to make the good news of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, known. I want to thank you for the contributions that you give through First Lutheran Church to support our ministry and to get the good news of Jesus out. You can send your contributions to, uh, to the church office through the regular mail. You can put them in the drop box or give electronically. Mostly, I thank you for giving your hearts, your commitment, and I thank you for your prayers. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup. And after he had said a prayer, he poured it. He gave it to them and he said, Take and drink all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We remember tonight and we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come your, your will be done, be done on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. At this time, if you have not prepared the elements, get them ready. Or if you have the little individual serving that was in the Holy Week in a bag, use that at this time. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 116, Acknowledgement of God's Deliverance. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? 
I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Presence, precious is in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his faithful one. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in my presence, in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. 